Across star-forming clouds, we see long, delicate filaments of gas and dust, narrow threads stretching for light years through the darkness, yet measuring just a fraction of a light year across. They are remarkably coherent, resilient, and many of them appear to share a surprisingly consistent width. But it doesn't stop there. This pattern repeats itself at every scale, around galaxies, between clusters, even across the vast cosmic web that binds the universe together. The same filamentary structures appear again and again. And yet we're told that plasma, which makes up nearly all of the visible universe, cannot organize itself. That it behaves like a neutral gas, pushed around by turbulence and pulled together by gravity. So how are these filaments forming? The only explanation we're given is gravity. But that's where the problems begin. In our own galactic neighbourhood, we observe several star-forming regions. Orion, Taurus, the Polaris Flare. These regions are filled with long, thin filaments of gas and dust winding through the darkness and stretching for light years while measuring just a fraction of a light year across. Along these filaments, stars seem to be forming, as if guided by some hidden structure. Surveys like the Herschel studies reveal that these filaments are not just coherent and resilient, they seem to have a surprising rigidity maintaining their shape even as stars form within them. And even more intriguing, they all appear to have nearly the same width, around a tenth of a parsec. And these filaments are not rare. The sky is full of them. They form vast, interconnected networks that weave the raw material of stars into intricate patterns we're only beginning to understand. And as we zoom out, the pattern continues. Around galaxies, we see vast filaments of gas connecting them, thought to funnel material directly into the galactic disk and fuel star formation. On even larger scales, these galactic filaments stretch between clusters, forming the great cosmic web, which itself is believed to channel gas into galaxies and clusters, sustaining their growth. At every scale, these filaments are seen not just as structure, but as supply lines, feeding the formation of stars, galaxies and clusters alike. On the scale of star-forming regions, the standard explanation assumes that gas is mostly neutral. It's thought that turbulence creates random density fluctuations, and gravity then pulls those fluctuations into narrow filaments. Magnetic fields, if they acknowledge them at all, are treated as weak and simply frozen into the neutral gas, offering no active role in shaping the structure. But this explanation quickly runs into serious problems. The filaments persist even when there isn't enough mass for gravity to hold them together. Something must be actively confining it. They remain narrow and uniform even as stars form along their length, instead of fragmenting and collapsing unevenly. Gravity naturally pulls matter inwards into spheres and ellipsoids, not into long, coherent filaments that remain stable over time. And even as gas is consumed during star formation, many filaments remain in place, maintaining their structure as if supported by some hidden mechanism. The standard model struggles to explain these properties, particularly their persistence, uniformity and coherence across scales. It dismisses the weak ionization present in these clouds as irrelevant, treating the plasma as passive. Yet, what we observe suggests something far more dynamic and resilient is shaping the structure. And the inconsistencies grow when we zoom out. On larger scales, the cosmic web, the gas is assumed to be fully ionized plasma, but here, the plasma is modelled using magnetohydrodynamics, which treats it as nothing more than a simple conducting fluid. MHD on its own cannot explain the observed structure of these vast filaments. It offers no mechanism for plasma to actively organise itself. So, cosmologists assume an invisible scaffolding of dark matter is holding the plasma and galaxies in place, even though this dark matter has never directly been observed in the filaments themselves. At one scale, we're told turbulence and gravity are enough. At another, we're told only dark matter can do it. But in both cases, the explanation falls short. The truth is, the universe probably doesn't use two entirely different mechanisms to create the same kind of structure. The filaments we see at every scale are almost certainly manifestations of the same underlying process. In the laboratory, plasma tells a very different story. When researchers created plasma discharge in controlled experiments, they don't see it behave like a neutral gas. They see it self-organize. Currents in the plasma quickly form long, narrow filaments. These filaments are stable, they are elastic, 
and they even form intricate networks of branching and reconnecting threads. One of the most striking examples of this work comes from the Kurchatov Institute in Moscow, one of the world's leading centers for plasma physics and controlled nuclear fusion research. There, A.B. Kukushkin and V.A. Ranty Kartanov carried out a series of studies on the fine structure of plasma discharges in Z-pinch experiments. Their work was far from fringe. These experiments were among the most sophisticated and well-controlled laboratory plasmas ever produced. Rantsev Kartanov developed a technique called multi-level dynamic contrasting. It revealed intricate details in plasma that had gone unnoticed, showing a level of structure and organization no one expected. Instead of a single current flowing evenly through the plasma, they saw the currents breaking up into dozens of narrow filaments. And these filaments were not isolated. They connected and branched in a complex three-dimensional network. They described these networks as resembling woven stockings or a complex web of interconnected threads. More importantly, these networks were stable. They persisted throughout the discharge, maintaining a consistent width, and they organized themselves without any outside intervention. These experiments show us something that cosmology has overlooked. Plasma is not just a passive medium waiting to be shaped by gravity. It holds itself together. It organizes into filaments and networks on its own. But in the laboratory, these discharges happen between fixed electrodes, with a predetermined pathway. In nature, there are no electrodes, and no imposed path. The plasma builds its own channel, weaving its own network across the medium. A perfect example of this can be found right here on Earth. Lightning is often thought of as a simple strike of electricity from the cloud to the ground. But in reality, it's far more complex. Before a lightning bolt even forms, the electric field begins to carve channels through the air. These channels fork and branch in opposite directions, and one branch reaches down towards the ground, while another extends upward into the clouds. Together they create a connected pathway that allows the full discharge to flow. I explored this asymmetric behaviour of lightning in much more detail in a previous video. If you'd like to understand the physics behind it more fully, I've linked the video in the description below. But the key idea here is that the process is not simply one directional. It's a dynamic network of pathways growing from opposite ends and seeking each other out across a gap of neutral air. And there's another important layer to this asymmetry. Positive and negative ends of the discharge propagate very differently. The positive leader advances more smoothly with less noise and sustained current. The negative leader moves in steps, more erratic and noisy, radiating bursts of energy as it grows. The condition in molecular clouds are surprisingly similar to those in thunderclouds, a weakly ionized plasma mixed with neutral particles. This makes it plausible that a similar process could help carve out the filamentary pathways we see, as regions of opposite potential seek each other out across a partially neutral medium. And just as in lightning, where the two ends of the discharge tree exhibit very different dynamics, one more diffuse and branching, the other more concentrated and stepped, we might expect the ends of the cosmic filaments to show this asymmetry as it grows. If plasma filaments are so common in the universe, why don't we see them lit up all around us? In the lab, discharges are bright, and in thunderstorms we see lightning streak across the sky. If these filaments in space are really carrying currents, just like the ones we create here on Earth, why don't they glow too? The answer lies in different modes of plasma discharge, and in the role of neutral atoms. In the laboratory we see bright arcs because the plasma is dense and the current is strong and importantly there are plenty of neutral atoms present. As electrons flow through the plasma they collide with those neutrals, transferring energy. Many of those collisions excite the electrons in the neutral atoms to higher energy states. When those electrons drop back to their normal state they emit photons. And that is part of why we see light. But at these higher currents the collisions are also energetic enough to strip electrons from many of the neutral atoms entirely, ionizing them, adding more free electrons to the plasma. This feedback sustains and intensifies the discharge, concentrating the current and producing the brilliant arcs we see. Lightning works much the same way. The atmosphere is neutral, and as the electric field builds, it begins to carve a faint channel of ionization. Much of this initial network is not yet visible to the eye. Only when the current density increases enough to excite the surrounding neutral molecules does the full stroke flare into view in arc mode. And here, the finer structure of the filament network remains mostly invisible. In space, conditions are very different. The densities are far lower. 
The gas is already partially ionized in many regions. There are fewer neutrals left to collide with. Even when a current flows through a filament, the electrons simply don't have enough energy to excite the few remaining neutral atoms. Without those collisions, the discharge produces no visible light. This is dark mode. You can see a similar principle in the auroral circuit. Field-aligned currents flow invisibly carrying energy from the solar wind into the upper atmosphere. Only when a potential drop accelerates electrons enough to collide with a dense neutral atmosphere do we see the familiar auroral glow. Here, Earth's magnetic field plays an important role, guiding the currents along its lines and spreading them into broad sheets rather than letting them collapse into narrow filaments. Without this imposed structure, the same plasma currents would naturally tend to pinch into filaments, just as we see in other contexts. And as the current grows stronger, the dynamics change. The plasma can concentrate more tightly, pinch more forcefully, and organize itself into more pronounced structures. The light we see simply reveals how much energy is available, and how many neutrals remain to interact with. But the underlying structure is still there all along, quietly shaped by the same self-organizing plasma dynamics. This is why in the lab we cannot directly image a discharge running in dark mode. The filamentary structure is still there, but without collisions to produce light, it is invisible to our instruments. To actually see the finer structure, we have to push the discharge into glow or arc mode, lighting it up. The same is true in space. The vast networks of filaments may be running in dark mode most of the time, weaving the hidden circuits of the universe unseen. Hannah Salfane envisioned the universe as a vast tapestry of plasma, threaded with loops and cells of current, each one shaping its surrounding, interacting with its neighbour, and cascading into ever smaller structures. These loops don't simply deliver material from one end to another, they create pathways for energy to flow, shaping and sustaining the plasma around them. And for every path we can see, there is likely a return path we cannot. Quieter, more diffuse, but just as important. Rather than seeing filaments as single open channels, we should see them as part of a larger dance, a network of dynamic, closed flows that sustain themselves through interactions, with energy cycling through the system and spawning smaller and smaller loops in a fractal hierarchy. Most of the time these flows are invisible. They don't glow, they don't announce themselves, but they are there. They carry currents, they shape matter, they weave the hidden structure of the universe. Perhaps it's time to stop thinking of the cosmos as a passive stage where gravity does all the work, and instead begin to see it as Alfain did, alive with a motion of plasma filled with unseen pathways and loops of energy that quietly shape the universe we inhabit.